last meeting, we started to talk about three stages of concrete cross-section. The first stage, if you remember, the whole cross-section is still working, concrete intention is still good, and concrete incompression is already good. So in this stage, we are looking for something called cracking moment. Second stage, the applied load increased a little bit. So concrete intention cracked, no longer working. The only thing working intention is reinforcement and the concrete incompression is still working or working perfectly. The difference between compression and tension, we have something here called neutral axis. If the applied load increased more and more until you reach the ultimate capacity of concrete and compression and the ultimate capacity of steel in tension, that means you are talking about ultimate stage, ultimate stage. Uh, let me start with the first stage and cracked concrete stage. Anybody remember, uh, I told you something about uh, uncracked concrete. I told you that concrete intention is still working. That means the steel reinforcement is useless. You can ignore steel reinforcement. Once the concrete crack, once the concrete no longer working, steel reinforcement will start to work to carry the tension at the bottom of the cross section. So, first step you have to understand if you are talking about uncracked concrete cross section that means i can neglect reinforcement so we have plain cross section of concrete like this i can neglect steel reinforcement because concrete still working intentions concrete is still good intention and also in compression so we have something called the strain distribution compression on one side and the tension on the other side and in between we have something called the neutral axis the same shape of strain will be the same shape of stress we have compression stress and we have tensile stress If you go back to strength of material, we learn something called stress, bending stress, sigma equal M Y over I. M, moment, Y, distance between two points, the neutral axis and the top or bottom of the cross section. So why probably this distance or this distance? I gross moment of inertia. If, if you assume that sigma, the normal stress in concrete equal if R, tensile strength of concrete, and if R according to ACI, could 318, equals 7.5 square root of F prime C. Guys, do you remember what was the story behind F prime C? Do you remember what was the story behind F prime C? You should learn this story. F, F prime C. 
anybody remember what was the story behind this term? We have a good story. Yeah. During boring of concrete, the concrete is still fresh, still liquid. I have concrete cylinders. The diameter probably four inch and the height eight inch or the diameter six inch and the height 12 inch. I bored these cylinders with three layers. This layer with compaction 25 times with a steel rod and another layer and the third layer. Keep these concrete cylinders for 28 days. Then I have a concrete cylinder. Go ahead and apply compression force on this cylinder. During the compression test, we can record what is the applied force and what is the contraction delta. So I can figure out what is the stress, P divide area, what is the strain, delta divide the original lens. If you are able to construct this relationship between strain and the stress, you will reach the stress strain curve of concrete in compression. The maximum, the highest value here called F prime C. Wow, it's a long story. It's a long story, but you need to remember this story all the time when I mention F prime C. Characteristic strength of concrete and compression. Please go back last week and you will see we have something called compressive strength of concrete. F prime C. How can I determine this value? We have a long story with long time. Last for 28 days. You have to wait until 28 days. Do you remember it? Yes, um, you know, Oliver, uh, sometimes this long story can be converted to a bad dream. Because if you are engineer, if you are an engineer, site engineer, this compression test will give you indication of what is the quality of concrete? If your concrete is uh, uh, good or, or bad. So do you think I need to wait 28 days until to figure out what is the quality of concrete? Probably after seven days, probably three days also. Uh, after three days or seven days, I can do this test to get early indication early indication about the expected F prime C after 28 days. Because if you got F prime C at seven days as expected, you will see F prime C after 28 days will be good. So at early age, it's only just indication what will be expected after 28 days but the the official compressive strength of concrete must be after 28 days if you did at any other age early age it's only just indication for what will happen after 28 days you know so after three days seven days 14 days all of these just indication but the official value will be at 28 days. Okay. Okay. Uh, go back. This is the strength of concrete in compression. If you would like to get that tensile strength of concrete in tension, 
tensile strength of concrete, we have a relationship between compression and the tensile strength of concrete. Tensile strength of concrete, according to ACI, American Concrete Institute standard, equal 7.5 square root of F prime C. So if I know the value of F prime C, I can figure out the tensile strength of concrete. So if you assume this sigma equal to this tensile strength, then this moment will be the cracked moment of this cross section. So I can rearrange this equation to get this one. The, arrange, the rearrange uh, of this equation, I would like to get put M in one side and everything on the other side. I believe I will have something like this. Sigma I gross divide Y. Go ahead and put sigma equal FR, tensile strength of concrete. Go ahead and Y is the Y distance to the bottom. This one to the bottom, not this one to the top. We are looking for Y to the tension side. So we have tension at the bottom. So your Y will be to the bottom. That means this moment will be a metric. It's a very simple, very simple calculation. Let me do this first example. We have a cross section. Also, one more time, do you remember what is the story behind this cross section? We have many things discussed last time. Uh, this cross section in the real life, it's a real beam. Like this. And this cross section has three bars three steel rebars at the bottom. What we did, we only did a cross section. We did cut, cut, and I'm looking for side view. Your side view will be rectangle and the steel reinforcement looks like circles. Do you remember something like this last time? So the, this shape, is a real beam. The total thickness of this beam, 18 inch. The total width of this beam, 12 inch. 15 called depth. 18 called thickness. Depth means the distance between the top and the center line of the reinforcement. And we have here something called cover. Concrete cover, three inch. These three bars, three number nine. Three number nine. Actually, in our case, or in this problem, we are looking for cracking moment. That means the, the cross section is still and cracked. And cracked. Cross section. That means I can neglect this steel reinforcement. We have only cross section without steel reinforcement. This dimension is 12 and this dimension is 18. That's it. The neutral axis will be at the center line. So this little distance equal nine inch and this little distance equal nine inch. The I gross moment of inertia equal barrel 12 time perpendicular cube over 12. Your value 12 time 18 cube divide 12 equal 5,832 inch to 4. FR 
tensile strength of concrete equals 7.5 square root F prime C. The problem said we have normal weight concrete with F prime C equal 4,000 BSI. F prime C equal 4,000 BSI. The story behind F prime C, this value is 4,000. The highest value of the curve. So 7.5 square root F prime C 4,000. Your value will be 7.5 times square root of uh, 4,000. Your value will be 474.3 PSI. We are looking for M crack. Okay, M crack equal FR I gross divide Y bottom. What is the value of FR? 474.3. What is the value of I gross? 5,832. What is the value of Y bottom? The distance between neutral axis and the bottom of the cross section, this distance equal nine. Your final answer will be 30, 73.4 bound inch bound inch if you would like to figure out the units this value is bound bare inch squared bsi means bound bare square inch i gross is inch to power four yb nine inch so your final answer will be bound inch if you would like to convert it to bound feet you have to divide this number by 12. so your value will be 2000 i'm sorry 25,614. if you would like to convert it to keep put you have to divide this number by 1000. So it will be 25.6 keb per foot. So guys, you have to keep in your mind. BSI means bound per square inch. KSI means keb per square inch. Keb equal 1000 bound feet equal 12 inch please keep these units in your mind any moment in this course we would like to convert it to bound foot or keep foot we don't like bound inch we don't like keep inch so any moment in this course should be in bound foot or keep foot. This is the reason why I convert cracked moment to be finally bound foot or keep foot. Uh, the original value in bound inch, so I divided by 12 to be in foot. The original this value in bound, so I convert it to keep by divided it by 1,000. These uh convention uh, this uh change between units is very important any question so far actually it's very easy yb yb b means bottom yb means the distance between neutral axis and the bottom of the cross section here is y b b means bottom of the cross section one more example. We have a beam, but this beam looks like T section. In the real life, in the real life, looks like this. You know? So if you did cross section, 
you will find your cross section looks like T section. The name is T section. We have a T section with these dimensions. And the we is a concrete with F prime C equal 3000. Can you tell me what is the value of cracking moment? Okay, that's fine. Cracking moment M crack equal FR I gross divide YB. What is the value of FR? It's very easy. 7.5 square root F prime C equal 7.5 square root of 3000. Your value will be 7.5 times square root of 3410.8 PSI. We need to go back to uh, engineering mechanics because we need to figure out what is the I gross. To figure out the I gross, we need to figure out where is the neutral axis. To figure out the neutral axis, we need to divide this cross section to two areas. The first one, this area with this centroid, and the second one is this area with this centroid. Do you remember? We have in the previous problem, the cross section was rectangle. Without any calculation, the neutral axis is at the centroid. Where is the centroid? At the middle. So I can get it directly. But for this cross section, I cannot figure out where is the neutral axis, where is the centroid of this T section. So I will assume reference here. So Y bar equal. Or you can set up a table if you would like. Do you remember something like this? So this cross section, this area for the first one is 60 times 5. The distance between this centroid and the reference. How much? 27, 29.5 plus second area is 12 times 27. The distance between this centroid and the reference have 27 is 13.5. Yes. Divide the total area of this cross section, which is 60 times 5 and 12 times 27. So I can figure out the location of the neutral axis. 60 times 5 times 29.5 plus 12 times 27 times 13.5 divide 60 times 5 plus 12 times 27, 21.2. So at distance 21.2, I can draw the location of the neutral axis. And here is the centroid of this cross section. Then I can figure out the moment of inertia for this cross section barrel time 5 cube over 12 plus this area 5 times 60 times the distance between this centroid and this neutral axis it should be mm, 29.5 minus 21.2 8.3 square plus this one the parallel 12 time 27 cube over 12 plus this area 12 times 27 times the distance 21.2 minus 13.5 7.7 square so i can figure out the moment of inertia it can be just a moment Equal sixty thousand one hundred eighty four inch to four. Y bottom the distance between the neutral axis 
and the bottom of the cross section, what this value is, 21.2 inch. So you have everything. You have everything. You have FR. You have moment of inertia I cross. You have YB. So finally, M crack equal FR 410.8. Time I gross 60,184 divide 21.2. This value will be bound inch. Divide it by 12, it will be 97183.9 bound foot. You can divide it by 1000. To get it 97.18 keb foot. So the cracked moment of this cross section equal 97.18 keb foot. So the only difference between this example and this example, how to figure out what is the value of I gross. This one is very simple. You have rectangle. This one is a little bit not simple. We have T sections, so we need to figure out where is the centroid to put the neutral axis. So we need to search for the centroid. Once you get the centroid, we need to set up equation for I gross. Once you get I gross, I can figure out the value of M crack. If you have any question related to how to calculate I gross, please go back to engineering mechanics to remember how can we get the values of the section properties. Okay, so for any problem, if I'm asking you to calculate what is the value of M crack, here is how to calculate M crack. Just use this equation, figure out what is the value of FR, very easy. Uh, what is the value of I gross based on the cross section? What is the value of YB, the distance between neutral axis and the bottom fiber of the cross section? That's it. And I would like to convert your final answer to be bound foot or cape foot. We don't like uh, inch, bound inch. We don't like it. Second stage. Do you remember second stage? Yeah. The load increased, concrete cracked, no longer work. The only thing working at the bottom is steel reinforcement. So at this moment, we have neutral axis. The bottom side under tension. Concrete no longer working. The only thing working is steel. At the top, we have compression. Steel, concrete working good, perfectly. If you would like to draw strain distribution, here is the strain distribution. We have compression, we have tension. We have contraction, we have elongation. If you would like to draw stress at the top, we have triangle compression. At the bottom, we don't have anything on concrete because concrete is cracked. We have only tension on steel reinforcement. So the final cross section looks like this. Here is a part of concrete under compression. Here is the neutral axis, and here is the steel reinforcement. The remaining concrete is cracked, no, no longer working. So, cracked concrete cannot resist tension. All concrete in the tensile zone is cracked and is neglected. I believe you learned this method in strength of material or material um, um, mechanics of material. A method called transformed area method. What do you mean by transformed area method? But everybody is agree with me is agreeing with me that the remaining cross section looks like this part of concrete, which is under compression. And we have a steel reinforcement at the bottom. Anything else is removed. Anything else is neglected. Why? Because crack. Any questions so far? 
Any question so far? Okay, let me continue. What is the meaning of transformed area method? We have neutral axis. We have part of the cross section under compression still working. So this part will be the same, still working. We have part of concrete under tension. This part is cracked. This part is neglected. We have steel reinforcement is working at this moment. We need to convert this reinforcement to equivalent concrete. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have a little bit of steel. This a little bit of steel can be converted to equivalent area of concrete. We can use something called modular ratio. Modular ratio N equal youngest modulus of steel divide youngest modulus of concrete. Guys, if I ask you another story, anybody know what is the story behind youngest modulus of steel? Uh, uh, of steel and youngest modulus of concrete. These stories should be like your name. If I ask you what is your name, you will say Burak. So if I ask you what is the story behind this stuff, you have to remember these stories like your name. The first story I discussed today, actually I discussed it before, last week. Uh, what is the meaning of F prime C? So you can remember what is the story behind. We have another story. What is the meaning of youngest models? By the way, do you remember the story for concrete? Plastic cylinder, boring concrete for three layers, waiting 28 days, applying compression test. Uh, we are recording applied force and uh, the contraction. We can figure out the stress and the strain. We can set up a relationship between strain and the stress. The highest value of this curve co called F prime C. The slope of this curve can be called youngest modulus of concrete. The slope of the first point of this curve or the first linear relationship of this curve, the slope can be called youngest modulus of concrete. We have another story. We have a steel bar, probably 12 inch or 15 inch. This bar under the effect of tension force in a tension test. Do you remember tension test? During the homework, you have a problem like this. During the tension test, I can record the force, the applied force, and the corresponding elongation. So I can figure out the stress, which is the applied force divide area, cross-section area of this bar, and the elongation, so I can figure out the strain, which is the elongation divides the original length of this bar. If you can set up an equation, uh, I'm sorry, a relationship between strain and the stress for this steel rebar, I can reach something looks like this. Sometimes something looks like this. Whatever the relationship, at the beginning, we have a linear relationship between strain and stress. The slope of this linear relationship can be called youngest modulus of steel. Can be called youngest modulus of steel. So please remember all of these stories. Okay? If you divide youngest modulus of steel by youngest modulus of concrete, I can get something called modular ratio. This modular ratio can be converted 
between material between steel material and the concrete material what is the equivalent concrete to this steel once you convert your cross section to equivalent cross section actually i will convert the steel to equivalent concrete by multiply area steel by n so right now this area is concrete equivalent to this little area of steel how can i do this multiply area of steel by modular ratio how can i get modular ratio divide youngest modulus of steel by youngest modulus of concrete how can i get youngest modulus of steel and youngest modulus of concrete go back to the stories and you will remember Then your sigma equal m y over i for concrete and the sigma for steel equal n m y over i. This y for concrete, this y for steel. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. So we need to convert your cross section to transform it section we need to figure out this equation for concrete and this equation for steel actually both of them the same but for steel we need to multiply by n because you are talking about transform it section and this material is concrete so we need to convert it to back to steel so i multiplied it by n any questions so far Please write these two equations in your notes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you. We have example. But before starting this example, can I neglect the steel reinforcement? No, I cannot. Why? Because the applied moment exceeds the cracking moment. We are the concrete cracked. So if concrete is cracked, the reinforcement is working. I cannot neglect. If I'm looking for cracking moment, that means concrete intention is still working. So I can neglect reinforcement. But here, concrete cracked, so I can not neglect steel reinforcement. We have a cross section. Hmm. We have a cross section. This cross section, we have in this side compression. That makes sense for me. We have in this side tension. Someone will ask me a bad question. Hey, Ayman, uh, how can I figure out which side is in tension and which side is in compression? The answer is very simple. We are adding steel reinforcement to support tension. So if you found your reinforcement on this side, we have tension. No reinforcement at the top, that means we have compression. Another student will ask me another question. Hey, you told me sometimes we have to reinforcement on this side and sometimes we have reinforcement on the other side. Do you remember? One called area steel, one, the other one called F, uh, uh, area prime C, uh, area steel prime. So we have reinforcement here at the top and the reinforcement at the bottom. So which side is intention and which side is compression? The highest value of steel will be in tension. The smallest value of steel reinforcement will be in compression. If both of them equal, that means you have something wrong. This value must be greater than this one. Okay? Okay.
So we have compression and we have tension. The applied moment exceeds cracking moment. That means concrete cracked. So the remaining cross section will be something like this. By the way, this line called the neutral axis. Uh, and we have a steel reinforcement here. Uh, can you translate what is the meaning of three number? Nine bars? Yeah, no translation. Three means number. One, two, three. Number nine, this is the size of the bar. How can I get area still equal three inches square? How can I get it? Guys, do you remember I gave you last time these tables? Do you remember it? I uploaded these tables and I asked you to print them and put them with your hand all the time. Okay, uh, one more time. Hey, uh, number nine bar. Number nine bar. Where is number nine? Here you go. Here is number nine. What is the area of cross section of bar number nine? The area is one inch square. Area of one bar, area of one bar equal of number nine. Area of one bar of number nine bars equal one inch square. How many bars do you have? Three. So we have three bars. Time area of one bar of number nine is one. So the total area steel equal three inch square. So do you understand how can I get this value? Because during your exam or homework, I will not give you this value. You need to figure it out. How can I figure it out? Please. Which number of bar? How many? First, what is the size of bar? Based on the size, go back to this table to figure out the area of one bar. Then, what is how many bars? Multiply both of them together. You can figure out the value of area steel. So we have area steel here, equal three inch square. We have cross section of concrete. This part of concrete is under compression, so still work. Nothing else. Here is your bar. Uh, here is your remaining cross section. Thank you, Brian. Here is the uh, cross section. We need to convert it to transformed cross section. We need to convert steel to equivalent concrete. So concrete will be the same. But before keep going. I need to figure out what this width is. This width is given 12. Do you know what is the depth here? No, I don't know. Because I don't know where is the neutral axis. So this one will be unknown, dn, for example. Do you know what is the distance between steel reinforcement and the neutral axis? Mm, I can figure it out. 17 minus dn i'm sorry yeah the distance between let me clean up this one okay. the distance between this reinforcement and the top is 17 and i assumed the distance between the top to the neutral axis for concrete under compression dn so the remaining distance between steel reinforcement and the neutral axis will be 17 minus dn keep going uh, we need to convert steel to concrete so this steel will be equivalent of concrete. How much? N time area steel. What is the value of modular ratio is given? Nine. 
طيب اريا ستيل 3 تو تو بي 27 So this distance one more time, 12 minus dn. This distance is dn. This area time this distance to from the centroid to a neutral axis will be 12 time dn. 12 is this distance time dn. So this is the area. The distance between centroid of this area to the neutral axis will be dn divided 2 will be equivalent to the area on the other side. The area is 27. And the distance between centroid of this area to the neutral axis is 12 minus dn. The only unknown in this equation is dn. So I can figure out the value of dn, which is the depth of concrete in compression, which is still working. Let me stop here and I will continue next time. How can I get the moment of inertia I and figure out the stress in concrete and steel? But at, at this moment, any questions so far? Any questions so far? I have a question. Uh, the next uh, class, do you have another class uh, today? Just a moment, Roberto. Do you have another class today? At what time? No, no, no. So I'm the last one. So probably I can extend my lecture for 10 minutes more. So we can finish up at 12. Okay, yeah, 10 minutes only. Okay, so your question, Roberto, can you go back to the page? Slow writer. Which page? This one? Or this one? I think this one, probably. So one more time. Uh, Concrete intention is cracked, remove it. We have part of concrete in compression. The remaining uh, on the tension side is steel. I will convert this cross section to something called transformed cross section by con uh, uh, converting steel area to equivalent concrete area by multiplying area steel by N. Then the upper part of the cross section is equivalent to the lower part. How can I do this? Okay, the upper part area time the distance between the centroid of this area to the neutral axis must equal the lower part area times the distance between this centroid to the neutral axis. The only unknown is the distance dn. I don't know what where is the neutral axis, so I assumed it at distance dn, so I can figure out the value of dn. Once you figure out the value of dn, you will find all dimension are known, so I can figure out the value of i, and then can use this equation and this equation to figure out the stresses. Very simple. <laughs>